Nigeria has confirmed its first case of coronavirus since its outbreak in China in January 2020. That the Ministry of Health has confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya. In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Life was, was good. Uh, wake up in the morning, get ready for work, say your prayers, get ready to go to the office, do what you have to do, attend to your patients and impact the people around you that's at work and then come home and impact them too. So life was, was good really. My name is Ope Oshinowo. I'm a principal medical officer at the Massey Street Children's Hospital. I'm also a senior registrar currently with the West Africa College of Physicians and I'm preparing for my part two dissertation. I got that news January 7th, 2021. It was, it was a very low time in my life. Uh, to think that I would have COVID-19. It's something you don't wish for anyone. I was really saddened by it, uh, but I just had to do what was necessary to make sure that I survived it. And thankfully I did, uh, but it was devastating. Um, Dr. Ngozi Onye, I'm a 1982 graduate of the University of Ibadan. I'm a mother of currently two children, but I had a third child who I lost 17 or 18 years ago, and in whose memory I founded my current place of work, the Pelon Memorial Hospital. I wasn't surprised when I got the news that I had COVID-19, because from the minute I had my symptoms, I suspected it was COVID. So the test just confirmed what I already feared. The experience for me gave me an appreciation of um, what life is. Uh, of course it has, my life hasn't been the same since then. I value life a lot more. I value each day a lot more. The experience I think um, made me ask a lot of questions about the purpose for which I'm here and having to make the, the impact I was making before to be more committed towards it and uh, of course take better care of myself. I was not particularly concerned when I got the news that I got that I was positive for COVID-19 because I already had symptoms that were very suggestive and I already had my suspicions. So when I got the result, I was not very surprised. I just was concerned because I realized that it had thrown the whole hospital into panic. Being a doctor and having managed COVID myself, for most of the pandemic. I know a little bit more than many people do, and I realized that COVID is a very unpredictable illness. And therefore, despite the fact that I was double vaccinated and I expected a fairly mild course, I also knew that there was a possibility of things going the other way. When I found out I had COVID-19, it wasn't just myself. Um, at the time I had COVID, the number of people where I work, about 60% of the doctors had COVID at that time. So the health measures were, of course, the, there were protocols at the time for the drugs to use. Um, I remember then that was when ivermectin came and I also took ivermectin like everyone else did. Uh, social distancing, the COVID uh, uh, protocol, social distancing, hand washing, of course, I had to be in isolation for about two weeks from I mean, isolation at home. And uh, that, of course, was, was difficult. We, ha we have a way of, of carrying out a risk assessment for patients who are COVID positive. And I went through that process. I let other doctors 
manage my health. I tried not to manage my health myself. And I did all the things I was supposed to do. And I stayed positive mentally. Over 50% of the doctors I worked with at the time had the COVID-19 infection. Um, almost 60% of us did. At, at varying, various times, at about the same time anyway. Um, we all had it and we all manifested um, different symptoms. I, I knew of a couple of doctors who were actually asymptomatic, but because there were so many of us having an infection, they had to get themselves tested. And lo and behold, they had COVID and also had to isolate like we were. I also knew a couple of doctors who had had COVID before, the year before, who had it a second time. So those were, that was the way it was spread among us, about 60% of us. I know several healthcare workers. I'm sure something like 80% of the healthcare workers in this facility have, been, have contracted COVID at one time or the other through the pandemic. I do know quite a few health care workers that died, some by reputation, but at least four or five health care workers died under my own care in our own COVID center. So I'm aware of, of doctors that died. Yes, unfortunately. Dorcas Mogore loves her job as clinical officer. A big part of it, though, was to work closely with COVID-19 patients. Then one day, she got sick herself. I survived COVID. I went through a lot of problems. After I was infected, I didn't have a medical cover which could cover my bills and I got so sick. I was supposed to go on oxygen. My, both of my sons were infected too. It was very traumatizing. She survived. Nine of her colleagues did not. When the pandemic came, of course, there was the what exactly is COVID? So we were all briefed about what COVID is and what we must do as health workers. But because we, as it were, we're, front, we're, we're in a way in the front line because we see patients and you never know what a patient to a patient's relative is bringing with them. So those protocols were put in place. Of course, we readjusted the, our work environment to make sure that we were COVID compliant. I think initially, because we are one of the first facilities that accepted to treat COVID, initially there was fear and anxiety. But we also realized we were doing the right thing. So we went ahead all the same. We were afraid, but we went ahead afraid. Um, I think with time, we gained an understanding of the illness. We've done quite a bit of research and we've been able to, to treat quite a few people. So I think it affected us in the long run positively. To value life um, a lot more than I have, I think that's the number one lesson, to be thankful to God, to just to be able to breathe. When you hear a COVID patient tell you that they cannot breathe, something we do, we don't even pay attention to it, but something as seeking breaths becomes difficult. We appreciate life. Well, to the health workers who have been vaccinated, I want to say thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for getting vaccinated. Please continue the COVID um, compliance protocols. To those who are yet to be vaccinated, who are health workers, please get vaccinated. Um, Please put aside whatever fears or misgivings you may have. These vaccines have been tested. And the only reason we can take them is because they're safe to take. So let's take the vaccines, particularly if you're a health worker. To vaccinated health workers, I say kudos. Take the booster dose. I think it's good. I plan to take the booster dose as soon as um, maybe three months after my infection. Um, for the unvaccinated, I think it's very unfortunate. We are, we've just entered the fourth wave of the pandemic in the last two weeks. And most of the patients who I've seen in the last few, who have, who have had more serious illness, have been those who are unvaccinated. And I feel very sad when I hear that anybody was unvaccinated. 
especially people who I know had access to the vaccine but just chose not to take the vaccine. So what I will say is please, please, please go and take the vaccine. It makes a lot of difference.